Art brings us all together, and that is why these conversations are incredibly important. Today's topic is themes of art. Why is that a relevant subject? Because all of the artistic heritage of humankind, since the very beginning, fits within about eight different themes of art. What we understand is that our works of art, whether they're paintings, sculpture, drawing, textiles, buildings, all of that can be understood as forms. That is what we call the aboutness of a certain art piece. This aboutness is what allows us to experience them as art. Those broad areas are known as themes of art. They simply provide a framework for us to start the conversation. The number one theme is the sacred realm, the meaning of life. Where do we come from? Who made us? Human beings have been asking these questions, and as they're asking the questions and looking for answers, they're sketching things on cave walls, piling stuff up and creating rudimentary sculptures. That has been done in every single continent, in every human grouping. Art has helped us shape a relationship with the spiritual, however we want to define that. For instance, if we go back to Saint Chapelle, the construction of that chapel in Paris, Louis IX, as a Catholic, he kept fragments of bones of saints, thorns of the crown of Christ, important collection for him and his people. And he wanted to see stained glass windows that would allow the light in, and you want to have gold everywhere because that will remind them of the New Jerusalem, which is all part of the visual understanding of the Christian faith of the afterlife. That is what the artist had to do. In a similar way, if you look at the great mosque of Cordoba in Spain, you will see that the architect had a different kind of challenge. This artist was able to create a composition that would allow people to tap into finding themselves confused between the columns and the shadows to finally find the light right at the focal point of the place of worship. Another major theme of art, the social and the political order. It has been there since the very beginning. If you think of the major empires, okay, artists would have a huge challenge. You go to the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt, you will see that there was a certain purpose to that monument. Not only was it a tomb, it was also a symbol for the greatness of the empire of Egypt. So the pharaoh told the artist, listen, I am a junior god. As a junior god, I have to create a link between my earthly realm and the spiritual realm. So it is your mission, artist, to create for me a vessel which must be aligned with the stars where once I die, I will show up and have to be ready for battle. So I need to have chambers for myself with all the things that I love. And not only that, but make sure it looks impressive enough so that anybody who passes by the kingdom of Egypt can be impressed by the architecture of this piece. One of the best works of art to talk about this subject is Eugene de la Croix's Liberty Leading the People. It's a huge panel and there's a battle going on. And there's a lady right in the middle holding a flag the flag of France. She has her breasts exposed and she has all of these bodies of soldiers and people who went into this uprise and they're all looking as if they were children asking their mother, what should we do? Where should we go? So that painting was bought in 1831 by Louis Philippe. He was known as the citizen king because he was the king who took power right after the revolution. Still, that painting was seen as way too racy for the people of that time. It was so controversial at that time to have a female figure with both breasts exposed that that painting would disappear for another 30 years. So much later, in 1863, that artwork would be placed in a public display for everyone to see and admire. Because at that time, they thought now nobody's gonna rebel if this artwork makes them angry. And since we're talking about paintings and violence, then we have to mention Pablo Picasso's Guernica. Guernica was painted for a different reason. Picasso was already a big deal at that time, but he was living in France. Spain felt that they needed to display something made by 
a fellow Spaniard, but Picasso was not around. He felt so ostracized because of his ideas. He was incredibly liberal. Uh, the government at that time was going through a far right moment. And that is why he didn't want to make any artwork for Spain until something really horrible happened. When Hitler asked to test Nazi Germany's bombs on a city in Spain, the city of Guernica, General Franco said, of course you can come and drop your bombs on the heads of our women and children in Guernica because it's a useless city. After this slaughter, Picasso saw the pictures of the destruction and of the victims on the newspapers. And that was when he immediately got the answer that he was going to create an artwork that talked about the horrible situation of Spain and what had happened to Guernica. He created this massive artwork, 25 feet long and 12 feet tall in just a matter of days. Now that I gave you a lot of details about those two themes, I wanna tell you very quickly, other themes are, stories and histories, all the folklore, all of the histories of ancestors, all of the legends of soldiers and all that, they were portrayed in drawings, in paintings, in sculpture, in storytelling, so that lessons could be taught to the youth and to the faithful in those communities. Another theme is simply everyday life, the here and the now very ordinary things and that happened from ancient times all the way to today once a strong middle class was formed regular people started asking can you please paint me artists started painting people cleaning clothes ironing taking care of the land because it was no longer about the church it was no longer about the wealthy it was about regular people another major theme is the human experience really the human experience so much suffering, so much love. All of that has become very common as a theme in art. Frida Kahlo mostly created self-portraits. She was bedridden with a horrible spinal injury and she wouldn't be able to get up from the bed for most of her life. So she would be looking at herself in the mirror and painting. When she painted herself, she painted with elements that were incredibly important within her Mexican identity. So this one painting titled Self-Portrait with Monkeys shows Frida Kahlo right at the center with a few monkeys around her, some on top, some on the side, and they seemed quite protective of Frida Kahlo. But what she was really trying to say is, this is my reality and I don't want you to take it away. I want you to know that it's my culture and I'm protective of it. Another major theme is invention and fantasy. Take a look at the artwork by Hieronymus Bosch, who painted the painting titled The Garden of Earthly Delights. This painting is really about enjoying pleasures outside marriage, the church, basically you just going for it. What are the consequences of that? So he would show the degradation that would come and then eat you alive simply because you engage in so much lust, so much sin. He was living in a deeply Christian society. So within this context, this artwork is incredibly relevant. Another major theme of art is the natural world. Nature, the sky, the ocean, beautiful things that we have around us. Robert Smithson is well known for this kind of artwork that transforms the landscape. One such work is titled Spiral Jetty, a great spiral made of sand and rocks brought into the Great Salt Lake in Utah, salt crystals would form around the outline of the spiral, creating this effect that's glittery. And the depth of the water, which would change because the spiral was so long, there would be different shades of reds and yellows and greens and blue, because that for him was the best kind of canvas. And the last theme I should mention today is art and art. Art for art's sake, as reason and inspiration enough to create artwork. What will be the theme for your next work of art? That is the main question. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.